Do you know what a parry is, Tarnished? The mechanic that, when mastered, separates the boy from the men. <laughs> the soy boys from the chads, and so on and so on. In case you're not aware of it, parry is an Elden Ring mechanic in which you use a tool to deflect enemy attacks and leave them vulnerable to a critical hit. Mastering this technique may not be exactly crucial to complete your journey, but it's certainly very useful. And it also looks fucking cool when you land it in PvP. With that said, I've got a question to ask you. In the event that the water droplets from your bathroom shower were not the only thing you've parried in your life, what parry tool did you use the most during your journey? Were you even aware that parries could be performed with a myriad of tools aside from your standard shield, and that each of these tools have their own unique properties and numbers? Well, in case you didn't, you're going to learn about it today. We're going to talk about all the parry tools in Elden Ring and rank them from worst to best, since some tools are objectively better than others. Maybe with this, you'll finally know what to use to parry your life problems away. <laughs> In Elden Ring, the Parry Ash of War isn't just reserved for shields. It can be applied to a variety of weapons, each offering unique advantages. Depending on the weapon you choose to imbue, the resulting parry will exhibit different characteristics. These are quantified by three key values. Startup frames, duration frames, and recovery frames. The arsenal eligible for parrying includes claws, fists, curved swords, thrusting swords, daggers, small shields and medium shields. Additionally, there are five special parrying tools, four ashes of war for medium or small shields and one exclusive to the buckler shield. We'll base our judgement on the numerical values of the parry tool and the extra utilities it provides. With a bigger inclination towards PvP, as in PvE, parrying becomes simpler when you perfectly learn mobs and bosses' movesets. Without further ado, let's make that brain release the happy juices with the list. In the depths of D tier, we find the regular medium shield parry. To put it simply, it's absolute dog water. This parry variant boasts a sluggish startup of six frames, a paltry two frames of duration, and a laborious 17 frames of recovery. Landing this one, whether in PvE or PvP, proves to be incredibly tedious, thanks to its minuscule window of opportunity. As if that weren't discouraging enough, the realities of PvP combat necessitate preemptive parrying due to latency considerations an additional layer of complexity that further diminishes the viability of the regular medium shield parry. Oh no! In the realm of C-tier, we encounter four tools sporting identical numerical values to the poopy medium shield parry. However, unlike their shield-bound counterpart, these tools serve a dual purpose. They moonlight as offensive weapons, affording users the opportunity to stab their enemies in the PP with them. Opening C-tier, we've got fist parries. Fists are better than the regular shield parry, because at the very least, they can serve as nice offensive tools. Equipping it with an additional parry tool enhances its versatility, albeit not that much. Storm Stomp or Endure proved to be much better Ashes of War for Star Fists. But hey, we're ranking parries here. Moving up the ladder, we encounter Claws, which offer a slight improvement over Fists due to the existence of really nice options like Raptor Talons and Bloodhound Claws. These weapons boast the coveted Running R2 into R2 True combo with the latter possessing the additional ability to penetrate shields. Just like with fist weapons, nobody in the face of the earth will expect a parry from these things, so you may catch someone off guard with the right setup. However, despite their offensive prowess, claws still suffer from the same shortcomings as their predecessors, namely their very crappy numerical values. Moving along, we encounter both thrusting swords and curved swords. The clean rot knight sword and shamshir stand out as the premier options within their respective categories when it comes to PvP encounters. If you opt to infuse these bad boys with the parry ash of war, you can wield them either individually or in conjunction with a halberd in the main hand for a rather gimmicky offstock. Nevertheless, despite their potential utility, these weapons still suffer from lackluster numerical values, making landing successful parries harder than making a Discord mod run. In the B tier, leading the pack is the small shield parry. With five frames of startup, five frames of duration, and 15 frames of recovery, these numbers translate to much more consistent, successful parries, which translates into more molding gamers. 
However, there's a trade-off to consider. While the small shield parry offers reliable performance, it's limited by the fact that these are, well, uh, small shields. Unless you're wielding one with a passive effect like the spiral horn shield, their utility beyond parrying is rather limited, as blocking with them is not advisable. The second and final parrying tool in the B tier is the first special parry ash of war that emerges Thops Barrier. This ash can be applied to both small and medium shields. Beyond serving as a parry tool boasting 6 frames of start-up, 4 frames of duration and 15 frames of recovery, what sets Thops Barrier apart is its additional ability to deflect all sorts of enemy spells with no FP cost. Since it can be used with medium shields, it offers better defensive capabilities, and its effectiveness against mages also enhances its value. Despite marginally inferior numerical values compared to the small shield parry, these additional attributes elevate its overall utility, placing it a bit higher on the tier list. We're entering the realm of the big boys now. Leading the charge in the A tier is the Buckler Parry. Default to the Buckler upon acquisition boasts 4 frames of startup, 5 frames of duration, and 16 frames of recovery. Its swift activation and extended duration ensure remarkably reliable parries in various setups and facilitate more responsive reactions when parrying in PvE. However, two issues temper its excellence. Firstly, being a small shield, it shares the limitations of the small shield parry, meaning it can't block for sh <laughs> And second, the buckler is the universal sign for parrying, so an experienced player will see it as a big neon sign reading, I want to parry you, and will probably prompt them to be more careful. Nevertheless, the numbers of the buckler parry still make it very good and consistent, earning it its spot in the A tier. Next up, we have the dagger parry, standing out as the sole tool in the upper echelons with numerical values akin to those in the lower tiers. Six frames of startup, four frames of duration, and 15 frames of recovery, you might wonder. Why why does it merit its place in the A tier? Well, in PvE scenarios, its consistency aligns closely with options in B tier, which are quite good. However, if you play PvP, you'll know that the combination of a halberd with an offhand dagger constitutes a very good setup, featuring a seamless true combo where a running R1 followed by an L1 can be executed without allowing opponents room to evade with a roll. With a reliably consistent parry tool equipped in your dagger, you can parry right after the true combo, severely punishing monkey mashers. Even if the setup fails, some adversaries may find themselves second-guessing their offensive manoeuvres, wary of the looming threat of a swift parry that could abruptly pierce their urethra. Ah! However, it's worth noting that these mind games and setups predominantly confer advantages in PvP encounters. Consequently, the dagger parry falls slightly short in overall utility when compared to the final entry in the A tier. Stormwall stands tall with its attributes 5 frames of startup, 5 frames of duration, and 15 frames of recovery, mirroring the small shield parry's statistics, offering the additional benefit of deflecting enemy projectiles such as arrows and pots at the cost of 3 FP per cast. It's a akin to a blend of the commendable numerical values and reliability of the small shield parry, coupled with Thop's barrier's versatility, creating a tool that holds considerable value in both PvE and PvP engagements. However, despite its strengths, Stormwall still falls short when compared to the two most exceptional parry options in Elden Ring. Golden Parry emerges as the first of the two S-tier parries in Elden Ring, flaunting crazy good attributes, four frames of startup, six frames of duration, and 15 frames of recovery. These numbers alone are goaded, furnishing unparalleled consistency with the usual setups. Yet its excellence doesn't stop there. Golden Parry boasts an expansive hitbox, enabling you to parry incoming attacks from a safe distance. Even if your parry attempt falls short, you remain unscathed because the attack you tried to parry doesn't reach you. However, there's a caveat to its prowess. Utilizing Golden Parry exacts a toll of 4 FP per use, which, despite its seemingly inconspicuous nature, can swiftly deplete your FP reservoir. Although it stands as the preferred parry tool for many players, it falls short of claiming the title of the best parry tool in Elden Ring, a distinction reserved for none other than Carrion Retaliation. Carrion Retaliation boasts 4 frames of startup, 6 frames of duration, and 15 frames of recovery. 
Unlike Golden Parry, the parry part doesn't cost any FP at all, allowing you to monkey spam it without wasting any resources. As for the special effect, it's a superior rendition of Thop's Barrier. It can turn enemy spells into three homing swords that deal good damage if they land. This is very useful for both PvE and PvP. And in early PvP, it's great to punish mages throwing pew-pews at you from the backline while their friends do the heavy lifting for them. The spell parry part does consume FP, however, so be mindful of that. With the best numerical values in the game and one of the best utilities a parry tools can offer you, carry and retaliation really is the best parry tool in Elden Ring. And with that, the tier list is complete. Do you agree with our placements? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section. And by the way, the last mystery weapon was the family heads. So congratulations to those poggies who answered correctly. Here's the new one. You can try to guess it while Roderica receives her, uh, training. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you around, my apprentice.